This is Echo 3, and let's discuss making a very simple propeller-driven airplane. After working with the Breaking Ground DLC for quite a while now, I have been able to learn more about working with the rotors and propellers. I would like to revisit my propeller airplane discussion. For this scenario, I wanted to greatly reduce the complexity of this design. First thing to do is design the airframe. I have other tutorials covering this topic, and you can watch one of those if you are so inclined. For now, this is going to be a very straightforward arrangement. I'm going to throw on the main wings here. I am going to use these control surfaces and make them work as wings, just for aesthetic reasons. We are going to have a set of ailerons. Now we're going to make the tail wing, and I'm going to do the same trick here, just going to make it kind of look like a wing surface and it's not going to have any control authority. We'll drag it back to where it needs to go. I will then copy it and this is going to be the elevator for our airplane. So this is what's going to give us pitch control. Again, just simple. I'm going to drag this out. Some people do question how do you drag it further? I place it. I hold down the shift key when I use the move button and that's how I place it. We're going to put a simple rudder on this. I thought about using the control surface. I, th I think this rudder will actually look a little better. It's going to have one function, so the ailerons are only going to control roll. The elevator is only going to control pitch. The rudder is only going to control yaw. It's nothing complex with how I'm setting up this wings. This is very typical. and th That's all we're doing here is we're just going to make a very simple craft. This is going to be an electrically powered aircraft, so we're going to throw on some batteries. And we'll just throw on four here. That looks fine. Just kind of making this look like it's the engine compartment for my plane. I'm going to throw on one of these circular ones. Now we're going to throw on the rotor. Now this is where I'm going to really highlight what I'm doing. In this case, I'm going to keep full RPMs but I am reducing the rotor size to just 4%. I have done some testing with this and reducing the rotor size to 4% is still adequate to reach full revolutions per minute with the propeller blades. That's something you guys should do when you're making your own aircraft. Reduce the motor size as much as possible and it'll make the engine a lot more efficient and weigh a lot less. Now let's put on these propeller blades. I'm going to go with three of the smallest propeller blades here. This should work fine for this design. All right, now I'm going to throw these on and I'm going to make sure they are deployed, but I was wanting to have it at like zero. Note that the stripe side is to be on the front. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make sure these are placed properly so I can then work with my deployment angle and get that set up correctly. Now, what I have found is normally I do what's called a variable pitch propeller, but that's not what I'm doing in this case. We're gonna make a very simple plane and a deployment angle between 20 and 25 seems to work well. Normally, you're gonna want it around 10 to 15% deployment angle, sorry, degrees, when you are taking off and for max speed, you're gonna run around 40 to 45 degrees. I'm, I'm cutting all of that out. We're just gonna have a working propeller plane. So kind of compromise there. And in this case, I went with 22 degrees on the deployment angle. Now I forgot to actually hit deploy on the blades. So we'll take care of that later. And last thing we need are some landing gear. D then simple craft. We're, we're not making a complex airplane here. I'm going to use these little wheels. Now I do want to send these out pretty far. The rotor is going to have torque. And so the further out we put these wheels, the more stable the airplane is going to be on the runway. So we'll just throw them out here. I think that'll be fine. Again, testing always test and I want to make a stable plane on the runway. Very simple. I am uh, messing with the angle of attack on my wing here a little bit. A little bit more of an advanced feature there if you want to get into it. I get into that on my airplane tutorial but don't worry about that. I'm just making 
a very simple basic airplane here. We'll put the rear wheel here. We're going to go with a conventional arrangement as opposed to a tricycle arrangement. I think that works really well, especially dealing with the torque of the rotor. And last thing, a little bit of aesthetics. I'm going to put a little cone on the front and the back, just kind of cover up my nodes. Sometimes that helps a little bit with drag, although this thing's not going to go very fast. And let's see, we, I think, are just about done. Let's, you know what, let's make sure everyone knows whose airplane this is. I'm going to throw my name on the wings. It's not something you have to do. I have made some custom flags. Maybe at some point I'll make a tutorial covering how to make your own custom flag. It's not very hard. You can even use Microsoft Paint to do that if you want. In this case, uh, I use a little bit more, slightly more advanced program. I use paint.net to let me make these flags. Do what you want there. I just have some fun with my custom flags. If you're on Xbox, I'm sorry you can't make custom flags, but you could make an airplane like this if you want. And let's see, last thing we need to do is set up our action groups. I want to bind the motor power to the main throttle. I'm going to bind the RPMs and the rotor torque to the main throttle. And I'm going to unbind the brake action group from the motor and only have the brakes work with the wheels. That way when you're sitting on the runway, you can start the rotor and have it moving while the brakes are still activated. And so I would like to just put the abort action group for the rotor if I want it to break. And we need a pilot. We'll throw Val on here. That's the last thing we need. We are ready to take this to the runway and we will test it out and make sure it works. But I can tell you, it's gonna work. All right, now here, we have the brakes on, ready to go. We're gonna turn on the rotor, and this is where I forgot to hit deploy on my blades. We'll need to do that. So I'm gonna right click, hit deploy, and now my blades will be deployed to 22 degrees, and you can see we're already taking off. You can see it's a little hard to keep the aircraft straight. That's because of the torque of the rotor, but we're Okay, I mean just that when you're dealing with a single propeller design, you have to compensate for the torque. Notice I'm flying without SAS. What I've done here is I'm using the trim functions. And if you are playing on a computer, on a PC, hold Alt and then tap the direction you want to trim the aircraft. So I might hit Alt and Q to compensate for the roll of the airplane and I will use Alt and W and S to hold a particular pitch so I can fly level and that's how I can fly a stable airplane. I'm not quite sure of the controls on Xbox. I know you can hit trim with it. Actually, I know it's pretty easy to hit trim on that and guys accidentally do that. But when you're flying a propeller airplane, using trim is a great way to keep it stable, even better than the SAS. We're just going to come in for a landing. You can see this is a pretty easy design. Simple. It works. If you want a more stable design, I'd recommend a counter-rotating propeller design or a contra design. But that's up to you. You can get more complex with these aircraft. But here is an extremely simple airplane that works. I'm Echo 3. I will see you next time.